Fernando, get off the table. Were you raised in a barn? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Wherever you are in the world, my name is Mark, and welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. So today is, uh, we're a week into spring already, summer, sorry. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> uh, so I figured I would do a summer farm tour. Uh, a lot of you have been asking about the animals and uh, wondering how everybody's doing. We do have a couple newbies that came in, so we'll show you those ones a little bit later. And we'll start off with these guys out here. So who do we have out in the yard? We have Petey and Piper. Oh, yeah, they know their names, don't you? So they're having their afternoon nap. So these are our two pot-bellied pigs. Uh, and they came in, uh, well, they, they used to live at a restaurant and they were uh, acted as the garburator. <laughs> Uh, whenever they had extra food, they would just throw it out into uh, into their area, and they got extremely fat. Uh, so if you know anything about pigs, you know that you don't want to feed them too much food, uh, because they will eat like pigs, right guys? Uh, so they're on a ration now. Actually, we're not feeding them too much uh, of anything right now, because they do have free reign of the back area. Uh, that whole back area is open. Uh, they're out there and they're feeding and uh, now they're napping. So <laughs> uh, we have our kid goats. So two of our kid goats went to their new home this past week. Uh, we had Stanley uh, and Wilson. I had to remember his name. Uh, so these ones here we have, uh, we have, what do we have? We have five left in the yard here. This is Patches, one of the moms, and two of the kids. And the kids are uh, having some salt right now. So it's a good idea to have salt uh, because it uh, retains water in their body, especially on hot days. Uh, you want to make sure you have that salt. All right, so who do we have? We have this goose who has been sitting on... We took an egg away because it was rotten, and then I guess she laid one more egg. And now she's sitting again. So she's going to be sitting all summer, apparently. Uh, this is a Danish goose. So one of the Danish geese that we have. Uh, we have our roosters that roam the yard. So they come in. Uh, a lot of um, uh, animal sanctuaries uh, won't take roosters in. Uh, but, of course, we do. And we put them right out in the yard here. They can hang out. Uh, all of our pens and two of the roosters are over out in that pen over there. Uh, this here's Turbo. Turbo is, uh, what are you now, you're two years old? Uh, he can see he has a tag in his ear. So he came from a farm and he was a failure to thrive out in the field. Uh, so generally they'll die out in the field. Uh, we managed to get a hold of him and we bottle fed him along with Tinker, which is right over here. Uh, now, Tinker's tag fell out. There's a little uh, notch out of this one ear here. It was just uh, tagged right on the edge. Uh, but she was also a bottle baby. And Barry. Barry. What are you looking at? Oh, you're looking at the girls over there. Uh, Barry came in a year and a half ago. Uh, and he uh, was taking up a little bit too much room. The people that had him uh, needed to utilize the pen that they had uh, and could no longer care for Barry. Uh, so we took him in and uh, they just got their nails done and their shearing done. Uh, so we're gonna utilize their, um, I was gonna say fur, but I guess wool uh, this winter. So this winter we do all of the winter projects. Uh, like uh, cleaning and uh, carting the wool. We did the sheep last year uh, and then we spin it. So we're, uh, we put on classes and learn about that. Uh, so here we have Pauline and Shanzi. Pauline and Shanzi, short for uh, Shannon. We've named them after a few girls that, uh, uh, a few ladies that come in and visit uh, once a week and do some volunteering. Uh, now, you'll notice if you've been watching, one of them's missing, uh, which is Marl or Marlene. 
Uh, it turned out he was a boy and we've actually put him up front for now uh, with Carl and the ponies because him and Barry were getting into a fight. So Barry's alpha and he was a running around chasing him uh, and, um, and biting at him. So we needed to separate them. So uh, we're up in the air as to whether we uh, fix him, if that's gonna be enough, uh, or we have uh, actually somebody that's interested in, uh, in taking him in. So uh, we'll play that out and see how things go. Hey Shanzi. So her teeth were in really bad shape and uh, she is actually looking pretty good now. And so, lo really funny looking now that they're uh, shaved. Uh, so they're pretty wooly otherwise, but they're, uh, what are they? They're about four years old, I guess, and they hadn't been sheared and their, their feet probably hadn't been done in that four years. Uh, so they're, they're being taken care of now. Uh, we have one of the peahens here and we have, of course, Prince the Peacock. Now, um, we do have, oh, there's one out there. Okay, so there's the second one. Now, uh, they have laid eggs. Let's see if we can see them. And they were in the building here. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but I'll zoom in. Oh, yeah, the fence is in the way there. It's focusing on that. There are one, two, three, four eggs in there. So these girls haven't been sitting much uh, the last couple years. Uh, they did about three years ago and they hatched out three. So I think we're gonna have to take those and put them under a, uh, a chicken hen like we did last year. Right, Pauline? <laughs> Just focused on Barry. Do you love Barry? Oh, actually that's Shanzi. Oh, I'm getting mixed up. You know, which one's which? We, uh, we left the feet furry on Barry. So we kind of know which one's Barry. <laughs> uh, another rooster. Now roosters are fine in the yard. This here is Henry. Oh, Henry. Uh, and we leave them. He's like a little bodybuilder. Uh, we leave them out the yard. They are fine. They won't um, fight to the death. We do watch newbies when they come in. Uh, they will fight to uh, find out who is alpha in the yard. Uh, but uh, but nobody, gets, uh, nobody gets injured too, too much. There's, uh, there's a few little scraps, but they generally run away. Right, buddy? Are you alpha today? <laughs> okay, moving into, I see we've got some eggs here. These appear to be, I would say these are Muscovy eggs. Muscovy eggs have a waxy film on them, uh, unlike other eggs. <clears throat> these are our uh, rabbits, our female rabbits, and we're, uh, we're cutting down. I think we only have about six of them left. So we have been finding them homes, which is great. And um, uh, different events that we go to and people that shows, show up on the farm, uh, we do adopt them out. So we got uh, a lot of rabbits in this spring. Uh, 27 of them, I think it was. Uh, and most of the females were pregnant. So we had, oh, we had lots of them. Now the boys are in this one here, which uh, I believe they're all gone. I don't know why these roosters are in here. Uh, and I don't know if I want to leave this. It looks like there, uh, it looks like there's no rabbits in there. Let's see here. No, no rabbits. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that closed. They can jump out of there if they're fine. Uh, if I leave doors open, I get in trouble sometimes. <laughs> so, so we're just gonna leave that door closed. Uh, maybe it was closed for some reason. Uh, all right. So here we go. Can you spot the rooster? Actually, there's two of them. And if you look, you will see they're the ones all macho and manly there. We've got uh, two. So we've got, right, oh, one's just going in and the other one is that black one right there. Watching over the flock. Uh, and then we have all the hens. Oh, wait a minute. There's a third one. I was just, <laughs> right before he crowed, I was like, there's one there. Uh, so that one that went in might not have been a rooster. I thought we only had two roosters out here, uh, but they hang out in this area. 
So once we get uh, the fencing area and the new shelter for the ponies uh, all fixed up, I think what we're going to do is we're going to open that area so that these guys can do a little bit more roaming. Uh, we didn't want it open because Carl and Billy are, are on the other side of the fence as well with the ponies. And what happens is they get through and they go in and they eat chicken feed. And you do not want your, um, your goats to eat chicken feed or any kind of grain. They can develop bloat uh, and eventually uh, die. So just because they can't regurgitate their food, oh, Prince's tail's up. They can't regurgitate their food and um, it just blocks their esophagus and they get expansion in their stomach from eating too much grain and gorging themselves. Uh, so since we're going to have an electric fence that's separating that area from this area, we'll be able to let the, uh, let the chickens out. So, all right, pigeons. Why do we have pigeons, people ask? Well, we had pigeons years ago. They were actually some of the, oh, Prince. <laughs> They were actually some of the first. Okay, it's not gonna let me talk. Uh, they were actually some of the first birds that we had. Uh, we had fancy pigeons. We had lacquer shield pigeons, old German owls, um, and one other breed that I can't think of right at the moment. Um, but what had happened is we let them out and fly naturally, but the crows plucked them off. So we uh, we ran into a few pigeons and thought, well, let's have some more. Uh, so we left them in this, put them into this caged in area so that they cannot fly out and they're protected from the crows, which are the predators in this area. Uh, we did have a little gate here open as well, just in case we wanted to let them out, but they generally can't find their way back in because everything's so open here uh, and, and they can't seem to find the door. So they just kind of sit on the top outside the fence. Prince, are you trying to show off to your girl? <laughs> like always, the girls just don't seem to care about about his uh, his showcasing. Oh, poor boy! Yeah, she's not paying attention to you. Well, I hope those eggs are uh, fertile that are inside this building here. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll have to get the hen and figure out if they are or not. Okay, where are we going here? Um, moving right along, so we've got uh, the roosters, we've got uh, Muscovy ducks. So here is a Muscovy female. Uh, and you can tell by her size, she's a little bit smaller. She has that mask on her face. Uh, the, uh, the male Muscovy drake is one of the largest, if not the largest, duck uh, out there. Uh, this one here, I believe, is... Oh, I want to say that's a harlequin, but I don't think it is. Um, or a blue swede, a type of blue swede, maybe a cross. Uh, and this is a male Muscovy drake. And these two we called hi guys. Hi guys! Now, they, they did have a long name. Um, the lady that dropped them off, she was concerned for our child because they are very social, even with people. Hi, buddy. And we do take these two to petting farms because you can actually go up and pet them. Uh, but they're not as uh, squeamish or skirmish. Squeamish? Yeah. They don't run away from people like other ducks do. <laughs> hey, and you can pet them. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Uh, so they had a small child. I believe the child was two years old and uh, was starting to cry uh, because they were coming up and scaring him. Uh, so they decided to bring him or both of them over here. And uh, now they're here. So what she would do is when she went out in the yard, she would call. She would say, hi, guys. Hi and uh, they would come over. So we just decided, well, let's just call them Hi Guys. <laughs> uh, who do we have here? We have, this is Tinker. So she's uh, the only girl. So we've got Tinker and then two boys. Uh, the other one that I haven't shown you is Lambert. And Lambert was a bottle baby with Lucy. And Lucy is right over here. Uh, so if you don't know Lucy's story, she is about four years old, same as Lambert. And her mother came in, we called her uh, Junkyard Mama. And we didn't even realize she was pregnant. 
uh, because there was no mail on yard. So Lucy and her brother, uh, Joey I think it was, um, they were born and everything was fine for about a week and then they started losing the use of their back legs and their front legs and couldn't walk. I uh, did some research and found out that it was uh, something called white muscle disease, which is a lack of selenium uh, in their body, so um, uh, prenatal uh, vitamins, and uh, their mother wasn't getting it. So we gave them selenium vitamin E injections. We did lose her brother, but Lucy uh, was fine. We put her in a sling and uh, we rehabilitated her and now she's uh, fully uh, fully walking again without any problems. Uh, she is very small and she is unofficially the world's smallest, uh, the Guinness World's smallest living goat. Uh, we did contact Guinness and do some measurements but due to an error with the vet um, we, we couldn't get the actual certificate uh, and we figured well you know, we know she's small. It was quite a hassle going through the uh, the, the the procedure, uh, so maybe we'll do it again. Um, uh, who knows? Okay, now here is uh, these two are uh, our last year's babies. So this is Coco, and this is Petunia. So they're a year old, and you can see by their horns, uh, they're not quite as big as Mama's. And this is Snow, and Snow is very regal looking and patches there and the kids, the three of the kids. <laughs> and what they're doing right now is they're chewing, so they're chewing their cud. They came in from the, uh, the back and they, uh, they grazed. And then what they do is they burp up and chew their cud. So that leads to that problem where if they eat too much grain, they'll bring, they won't be able to bring it up and re-chew it to reprocess it. Uh, because they have a multi-chambered multi stomach, um, their stomach works on a filtration system. So they'll eat whatever won't go through to the next chamber, they burp up, re-chew it, and then reprocess it. Uh, and here's Blackie here with, uh, with her little one, uh, with Sheldon's sister right there. And we'll see Sheldon in just a little bit. Okay, we're moving over to, here is a, another rooster. So this is Jeremy, and he came in, uh, he was uh, found by a family. Uh, and uh, just uh, out by a, uh, a dam, a power plant dam, uh, out in Pinawa, I believe it was. And uh, he's fitting right in, he's looking really good. He's got that huge cone on him. Ah, uh, then we have, yes, I know the geese. We've got the other Danish geese. Uh, we have a Pekin duck here. We have a Rowan duck and we have uh, another Muscovy duck. So the other three over here that have these bumps on their nose. So these are known as Chinese geese uh, and you can get them in different uh, colors. There's, uh, there's also a Chinese geese that's a, like a bronze tan. And uh, they're also known as uh, Chinese swans. Uh, so we have the three Chinese geese, and they came in uh, because there was somebody that uh, saw them at their neighbor's house, and they were, weren't being taken care of very much at all. Uh, so a mutual friend contacted us and said, um, you know, can you guys rescue these geese? Because they're, they're just not being taken care of. They look horrible. They're malnutritioned. Uh, so we ended up going over to the guy's house and saying, oh, we've been looking for these type of geese forever. Uh, we, are you willing to sell them? And he said, oh yeah, give me a hundred bucks and they're yours. Uh, so we, uh, we managed to bring them, bring them in. Uh, and then the mutual friend that put uh, it all together, she actually donated the hundred dollars uh, back to us uh, that we had paid for the geese. So that was wonderful. 15 years ago we had built a, a dugout or a pond uh, with a trench going up to the front of our property because when we moved here we found that this is a low-lying area and um, it's actually shaped like a dish so all the water comes in fills up and uh, you get about a foot and a half to two feet of water in the center of the property right where our mobile home was when we first moved out here uh, so we needed to correct that. So we dug a pond with a trench to the front, uh, and it's been great over the years. But this past year, last summer it was fairly dry, 
Uh, the past winter was dry. We only got one real decent snowfall and it was in, uh, in March. So we didn't have a lot of runoff, so the pond was low. So we started looking into liners and uh, throwing it out there. And um, somebody said, oh, check with Titan Environmental, which does uh, huge irrigation ponds for golf courses, uh, water treatment facilities. And one of the guys had actually sold off his part of the company and decided to do his own little thing uh, called Ron's Ponds. So Ron came out and he's been working on our pond. Uh, and what he's done, as I've covered this in, in other videos, but uh, he's dug out all the organic material, all the, all the bird poop, the duck poop. Uh, because that can't be underneath there uh, because it'll just rot and possibly cause shifting and smelling and all kinds of funky stuff. Uh, so what he did is he dug that all out. He then put in fabric down. Uh, so it's a landscaping fabric or a geotextile. And then he went and he took rock and put river wash rock all on top of that. Uh, and then he put another layer of geotextile fabric and then he covered it up with some fresh material uh, which came from the berm that was sitting right here. Now he took all the organic material and he put all of that in a big pile back here which he's going to reuse for the berm because it has organics in it uh, and it will grow grass a little easier than just straight gravel. So he's going to start, uh, well next week uh, we're going to see lots of action here so I'm going to be doing uh, some time lapses and some videos and I'm going to stitch it all together uh, pond start from end but you can see this uh, this ledge or what he calls it a bench and what that is is he's going to put in the material which is a high density hard polyethylene liner that he's actually going to weld in place uh, and it's going to put, go in there it's going to probably be I guess heat molded to it and come up uh, and then seamed together uh, with heat uh, now what this ledge or bench is going to be is it's going to come up, go into the ledge and then up and over here. And then he's going to backfill with river wash rock all around the outside. So when the pond is filled up, there'll be no rock in the bottom here, which will make it easy to clean uh, down the road. Uh, I can go in and clean it just like I do my pool basically uh, and, uh, and suck it all out and get rid of it. And uh, you'll be able to see that nice rock edge right around the outside. Uh, now we're going to be able to control the height of the pond because this well here, it's a shallow well that just goes down just underneath and it ties into that layer of uh, river wash rock underneath, uh, allowing water to be pulled from the bottom. Now this uh, is running and it's been running for the past week and a half to keep this dry so the water doesn't pull up. Uh, and it just goes back and, and dumps back over there. Uh, so the ducks are playing. I can actually see one of the ducks back there. Uh, and that's their, that's their newer pond area back there that they go and hang out. Uh, the pigs, Petey and Piper, they also hang out back there and do a bunch of rooting. And uh, look for bugs and all kinds of stuff. And then yesterday it was really hot. Uh, they were actually swimming back there. Uh, this here is a windmill that uh, has an air stone that is attached, it's disconnected now, but there's a hose here and it goes down into the water and this is what aerates it. Uh, so what can happen is when uh, the water level goes down lower, we can turn on the pump and uh, it will fill up the pond again or we can kind of replace the water. Uh, and in this area here, there is going to be a, uh, a waterfall with a shallow pond here and then like a little rock river that flows back into it. Uh, so the animals can come up and they'll be able to drink out of this little river that's uh, flowing through. What is it, hi? You looking for water? Come back in a week. <laughs> you have to go out back. <laughs> uh, so we have been keeping water dishes for them uh, all around, plus the water in the back. Uh, so this is the trench that goes up to the front. Uh, now during construction we had this uh, chain link here and we've opened that all up uh, and right to the property line. We've put in an electric fence and you can, uh, you can actually see how the bottom is uh, you know, all chewed out. So the, they've gone in and they've cleared it up. Uh, we're eventually going to put in a permanent fence in the back but um, you know there's a lot going on so we will uh, have to revisit that. 
Ah, it looks like it's starting to rain. So we better uh, go see some of the other animals. Okay, so this is our nursery area, and we've got a nursery area within the nursery area. <laughs> Hi, Sheldon. Hi, buddy. So, of course, this is Sheldon, so he's our special little boy. Uh, he was born the runt, and he was bottle fed because he couldn't walk for the first, uh, well, for the first week, he couldn't even stand. Uh, so we bottle fed him, we worked that milk into him, we used uh, powdered milk, and mixed it with water, and, um, He's doing, he's doing great. So we got him a little buddy lately. And this is Wiggles. So Wiggles uh, was, uh, was at a farm, a hog farm. And what had happened, this one was the runt and mama stepped on her foot. Um, possibly broke the foot, we're not sure. Um, so you can kind of see, I believe it's that back leg. See how there's a bump there on that back leg, back, uh, her right back, our left. Um, so she seems to be doing fine now, but our concern is when she gets bigger, because she's going to be a 600 pound pig, uh, that the weight won't be able to support her. So we want to make sure that's healed properly. So I believe Monday, Tara is taking Wiggles in and um, they're going to get uh, some x rays done. Hey, Wiggles. Hi, Wiggles. A uh, what? <laughs> Hi. What? How about your belly? Oh, there it is. Hi, Wiggles. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Belly rub? Belly rub? No, I don't have any food. <laughs> belly rub? Oh, stretch it out. Oh, stretch it out. So she's going to be, she's going to be a big one when she gets older. <laughs> um, but, uh, but she's super cute. So what had happened was the people who worked at the ranch uh, saw this and uh, saved her, you know, brought her home. So she has been living actually in their house um, for, uh, oh, I don't know, for, for a little while now and made very good friends with the dog. And, but they realized it's gonna get a little bit bigger and they can't have Wiggles in the house. So they brought her over here. Uh, and now this is Sheldon's new playmate. Right, Sheldon? You have somebody to graze with. Sheldon! Sheldon! Hey! Sheldon! Sheldon! Are you too busy eating? <laughs> Sheldon! Wow! Yeah, so no more bottle for Sheldon, as you can see. <laughs> Sheldon's all about the grass. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, what else happened here? <laughs> Well, this is our nursery that's inside the nursery, and we've got this, uh, this plastic material down here uh, so that little birds can't get out, because even this chicken wire, sometimes, uh, depending on the size of the animal or the bird... So here we go. Look at them run. So these are little guinea babies. And Tara noticed them uh, show up with mom. <laughs> Uh, on, I think it was Friday, I came home from work and she's like, oh, we've got, look what we have. So she wanted to make sure that they were all safe and protected. So she brought them, uh, opened up the gate, brought them in, and here they are. So the guinea hen, uh, its primary diet is, uh, is um, wood ticks. They love wood ticks. And in the summer, they'll actually eat their weight in wood ticks. Uh, so they're cute little fluffy guys, guys and girls. And um, so these white ones are likely going to be pearl. So they're the pearl color. So if you look out here, you can see that far one. I don't know if I can get this to focus. Um, the far one is a pearl. Uh, and then this is the darker, like mom here. Uh, so you can kind of see the difference in color here, over here. So there is the darker one there. And then we have the pearls. Now because we have no water in the pond, these ducks have been wandering around all over the yard. Uh, this is Einstein, and he is a tufted Pekin duck. 
uh, sometimes known as a crested pecan. Uh, I called it a tufted once and somebody said, no, it's a crested. And well, it's a crested or a tufted. It probably depends on where you're from, tomato, tomato. <laughs> uh, and these ones here uh, are two blue Swedes. And that is them. So we have some other special guy right here, Fernando. He was just eating. What are you doing, buddy? Are you hunting? Are you hunting for little morsels of food? Did you have fun this morning with all the people that came to visit you? You can see his snood on his beak is elongating and his feathers are starting to puff up because he's all about impressing people. <laughs> uh, and his, um, his face skin We'll call it face skin, including his snood. Uh, that'll all change color depending on his mood. Oh, there we go. Yeah. He just had to warm up to it, right? So he goes to fairs. Uh, he goes, um, uh, went to the legislative building about a month, month and a half ago and got an award for, it was the Service Animal and Animal Therapy Day. So it was the first annual in Manitoba. Uh, and he went into the legislative building and uh, we didn't even know we were getting an award, but uh, we got an award for that along with the City of Winnipeg uh, Canine Police Division and a ranch uh, just south of us about half an hour. Uh, so that was kind of neat. Fernando pooped on the marble floor four times, didn't ya? <laughs> you tell those politicians what you think. <laughs> And who do we have in the cage here? We have Sophia. And we have Summer. Now these are two hooded rats. And, ooh, woo, two hooded rats. <laughs> and uh, they were brought in by a, um, a girl that, uh, she's a foster child and she wasn't allowed to have rats. Uh, they have cats and uh, I think some dogs so they weren't able to have the rats. So they're extremely friendly and we've put them out in this cage. They were just in a small cage. Uh, so this is a little bit larger and uh, we may even work them into a larger kind of outdoor cage. I believe they said they had one uh, so uh, we can go pick that up and maybe build that into uh, our outdoor enclosure area along with our new um, outside barn expansion that we're planning on doing. Uh, so these guys just eat uh, dog food. Uh, that's what they uh, they enjoy doing. We had rats years ago and they are extremely friendly. They're very good pets. I prefer them over any other type of rodent pet. Now the front area here, this is where the boys are. And we've got this uh, spring gate here. Top's actually not even connected. <laughs> um, but they don't know that, so shh, don't tell them. Uh, so the electric fence is going to run over here. And we'll have a, a pole maybe in the ground here. And then it'll spring gate between this building. Oh, and the girls are in there. Hi, girls. Hi. So this is Willow on the right. And this is Shadow here on the left. Uh, so these two girls came in because the, uh, the girl that previously owned them moved out of their house and um, headed out into the world and left the ponies at home. So mom and dad said, well, we'd like to find them a new home because we don't uh, want to be tied down with them. Uh, so they contacted us and said, well, we want to uh, have them come over with you. And... Um, you can, you can find them a better home faster than we can. But I think we're going to keep these two girls. Uh, we did have a boy, a miniature horse called Levi. And uh, we actually found him a, a good home as well. Uh, so we're going to keep the two girls. Uh, here, uh, Tara's thought about just hinging this up uh, so that it's open. Uh, so they don't feel so enclosed. So we've got to paint this and trim it up. Uh, we have some, uh, I picked up some brown paint. We're going to paint the whole thing brown. Uh, then we're going to do, uh, it, it's old pallet wood that we get for free from a pallet company. 
Uh, so we're going to take them and we're going to paint them uh, a hunter green, which is what this building uh, is, is colored. Uh, and we're going to do the trim all in hunter green. And then also the trim around the, uh, the opening there as well. So hunter green is also what the top metal uh, color is. Uh, so that is that and we uh, have plans to possibly mirror this and put another building on this side. We have moved Marl up here, uh, but he may have a new home already. So um, we, um, we may not build it quite just yet. How you girls doing? It was hot yesterday and sunny. It's not so bad today. I think they like their little shelter. <laughs> Lots of room for them. So this is a 10 by 10 building. And uh, they seem to be quite enjoying it. Oh, okay, everybody's uh, just enjoying. <laughs> uh, so we have Marl in here that <laughs> seems to have made friends. So this is where all the boys are. <laughs> uh, so there we go. There's Marl. And there's Carl. Never thought of that. Carl and Marl. And Billy. <laughs> so Billy is uh, last year's baby. And not such a baby anymore, are you, little boy? Uh, and Carl is, oh, he's about, I think he's four, four years, maybe even five years now. Um, and then Marl. So Marl's going to hang out with these guys up here. Uh, now, the, uh, the story with these guys is we were looking for an alpaca for Barry. And we ran across this ad, and we thought, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go and buy one. But when Tara showed up, she noticed that all three of what we thought was girls uh, were in horrible shape. So the guy that helped load them up from the farm saw on the side of our truck it said Animal Rescue uh, and Petting Farm, and he said, well, yeah, I guess these ones. I guess they are an animal rescue. <laughs> so, uh, but then of course when we brought them home, we found that this one here was a boy once we got him shaved. Uh, and ever since then, and putting them together, uh, Barry and him have been at it. And of course this one's a little bit smaller, so we can't quite defend as easily. Right, Marl? And uh, so we figured, well, let's put them up here. Uh, we've even got, actually, Tara was calling them Marley. Uh, Marl, Marley, there's a few different names out there. But you can see uh, he's got a little, uh, he got a little rat tail going on on the back. <laughs> when they did the, uh, the trimming, they decided to leave that. Hey, are we going to have to fix the... Carl, what are you doing? You're banging through there. Ah, you're so destructive, little boy. You guys just enjoying yourselves? No, don't get up. No, no, I'm good. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> okay, coming into the building. Uh, so this area that's in here, turn on. There's probably not a whole lot of light in here. Um, this area in here is our nursery area. So when we do have small ones, we, um, we have them in this area here. This is just plexiglass that we had donated and picked up uh, and we built into these little nurseries. Now I'm going to turn on to get as much light here as possible. Um, okay, well, I don't know how much light this is going to be, but uh, you guys haven't seen these guys in a while. So this is Francisco. So he is a male chinchilla. And this is Willow, his mate. Now, um, we got in Francisco... Uh, initially, uh, one of our foster daughters um, uh, had him as a pet, and then we wanted to uh, get a get him a mate. So Willow, and this one here, his little baby Francisco, that uh, was born a couple months ago, and oh Willow, I'm not doing anything. You're so judgmental. Ah. <laughs> uh... One, two, three. <laughs> so she surprised us with three other ones. So um, we might have to get one of them fixed. <laughs> Francisco or uh, apparently you can't separate them because they can go into a deep depression. Uh, so we're going to have to figure out exactly um, how we're going to deal with this. I don't know if you can put them in cages side by side. But if you do have chinchillas out there, maybe let us know... Um, what options that we have. Let's just kind of put that. I don't want to squish anybody. 
Kay. Kay. Get out. Okay, they're all okay. Well, okay, all right. All right, there we go. Um, now, what's interesting is all of these are boys. So these three here are boys, and of course this is a boy as well. Now, what is interesting is, and we didn't think about it the first time she had one, we lost a couple. Um, and, and it was like, okay, well, she, you know, she, she uh, she wasn't able to, uh, to handle it or, or whatever. And then again, she, we lost a few more and we realized that they were female chinchillas or female babies that we were losing. And what it appears to be is she is actually killing off the female babies, possibly because it's a rival. Uh, she doesn't want other females. She loves her man. Francisco, and she doesn't want a younger girl to come along. That's all we can think of. And and with this last batch having three of them, all boys, and they all survived, um, tends to tell us that, um, you know, maybe there's something else going on there. So that was interesting. So if you also uh, raised in chillas or have run across that before, please uh, leave a comment below uh, and uh, let us know your thoughts on that. Well, it's not that hot. It's only 23 degrees, but it's very humid after after yesterday. <laughs> okay, so now we're in the barn. <laughs> and who's making all the noise are these three little Sarama roosters. Uh, so we have Zeus, Atlas, and Apollo, uh, the Roman gods. And then we have uh, another one called Pegasus, which was a white one. There you go, thanks, right on cue. Uh, a white one, which, um, oh, there he is, right there. <laughs> there he is. Uh, so he's kind of, he's not in with the, the group right now. And, uh, okay. Oh, there's, what? Um, there's chaos in the hen house. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully you can still hear me. <laughs> So here is, hopefully, the last batch of bunny rabbits. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little bunnies. And we keep on getting in. Um, so there's, uh, there's, oh, those are the two boys. Okay, that's where the boys went. So here's the two male rabbits that we have. Uh, and the reason why these guys are in here is because they're still fairly small. So we want to make sure that they're um, they're fine, they're protected. Uh, now we do have this board that runs across here. So when they get a little bit larger, we will be moving them out into this area here. And then of course separating the females and the males. Uh, and having the males in here. And the females uh, will go outside. So that is them. Oh, you boys are so loud. You're so, so loud. Hey? <laughs> All right, so this is the inside of the pigeon slash peafowl pen. What do we got? Oh, we got two little babies. Uh, okay, we got two little babies, and you are a, uh, you're, you're like a teenager, you're almost ready to fly. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll put babies underneath, now, sometimes they'll put, the moms will put babies underneath the, uh, the teens, <laughs> which is hilarious. Uh, here is an egg, so someone else is deciding they're going to start to uh, lay. Uh, we have a young teen there. And this one looks like a mama, yeah, and she is sitting on two eggs. And we got another mama down there. They, um, they tend to, uh, they tend to have a lot of young. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave them and let them get back to uh, sitting on their eggs. Right, guys? Yeah. All right, so going over to the chicken. Uh, so we built this all ourselves, this building. Uh, and this is just stucco wire built in, uh, framed in doors and reinforced. Uh, and it's relatively easy. So I did, um, 
we do have a video back uh, a while ago that uh, shows some of the early construction. So these are hens, and of course two, possibly three roosters. Uh, I'm not quite sure. So what do we have for girls? What are you doing in there? Are you sitting on some eggs? Yeah, you got three eggs in there. It's four eggs, whoop, four eggs in there. Excuse me, excuse me, ma'am. And uh, yeah, we've got some eggs in there and we've got, okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these broody hens. This one seems really broody. And I would like to change her eggs out with the peafowl eggs. Um, so I'm gonna discuss that with Tara since she's the farm boss around here and make sure that uh, my plan is, uh, is a good one. And then we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll do that. This here is the dog run. And this here is a dog, Maggie. Maggie, Maggie is a West Highland White Terrier. And she is, uh, I guess she's about five years old now. Hey Maggie, where's your boyfriend Toby? Where's Toby? I see where Atlas is. Atlas is relaxing underneath. <laughs> Atlas, come here, buddy. Come here. Uh, oh, hi, Maggie. Hi, yes. And Atlas is a Bernese Mountain Dog. So he is, uh, I think he's about three years old now. Wow, time flies, eh, buddy? So he is a herd dog, but he doesn't really do much herding. <laughs> Uh, we were hoping that he would be able to uh, to use those instincts uh, because we often let the animals into this area here, uh, especially with the new pond construction. So all of the mammals basically come into here um, and it would be nice for, for Atlas to run around and to scurry them all back out. Uh, but it usually doesn't uh, need to be done uh, because once they're in here for the day, they're ready to go back out. Uh, we have automatic waterers watering feeders stations at multiple locations just hooked up to a garden hose and it uh, works out wonderfully where's Toby let's go find Toby okay I found Toby no. and here he is well no Toby you, you were cuddling and watching TV yes why don't you go cuddle Yeah, okay. Well, maybe I'll leave the room. <laughs> and where is Nix? I did see Nix. Ah, uh, she was perching somewhere earlier. Nix, here's Nix. So we have Nix up here in uh, this wine rack. <laughs> and we figured this is the perfect location because her food is up there. So the dogs can't really get at it. Atlas is larger, but he mainly stays outside. Um, so Nix has her little wine rack that she stays in. <laughs> uh, so that is it for this video. Uh, I think I covered everybody. Uh, I did, um, I can't remember if I saw Drake or not, but um, I'm sure he's somewhere around. He might be back at the, uh, the back watering hole where all the water's being pumped out. Uh, so that's it for the farm tool. Y tool. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's all of our animals. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments below. And if you have any information on the chinchillas, uh, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, so we can do some searching up. I think Tara did some searching initially, um, and that's what kind of what brought her to that conclusion. Uh, so if you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to go over to our Facebook page because we do do quite a bit of posts on there. Um, those of you who follow us on Facebook probably already saw Wiggles and probably saw the little baby guineas. Uh, so we post there and then of course I only upload once a week. Um, so you'll get the uh, up-to-date information over at the Facebook page. That's it and uh, we'll see you next weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.